occurrence since the death of George Floyd and as African Americans fight for police reforms and other racial justice. We also see constant efforts to fight the coronavirus pandemic because of its disproportionate grip impact on the black community. CDC figures show us, of course, minorities make up a majority of coronavirus cases in many communities. I'm going to turn now to Dr. Ebony Hilton. She's an associate professor of anesthesiology at the University of Virginia. Uh, doctor, on the one hand, people would say these are separate crises. You have the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, you have the racial reckoning and protest movement going on in America. But you say uh, for black Americans, they are connected. Explain. All right. Yeah, for sure. Um, thank you for having me. Well, when you look at the population of people that are dying at higher rates for COVID-19, and we look at those who are dying at higher rates for police brutality, we see they share one common thread, and that is African Americans and racial minority groups tend to be those that, that fall at the hands of, of these two swords. And the reason being is that they share the same disease process, which is systemic racism, and how that plays into um, everything that we see unfolding today. And, and so I, I just want to get your thoughts, A, as someone in the medical community who's dealing with the pandemic issue, but B, just as a black American watching all this play out, you, you shared a picture uh, from your hometown. Uh, you're in Charlottesville, Virginia right now, but this is Little Africa, South Carolina, and I hope we could show the picture up, and it's a heinous image. It is a heinous image that you show there. Uh, we don't show it to promote it, we show it to condemn it. Uh, I just, just your thoughts on this moment, when you see, that's home. Uh, that, that's, home that's home, and the, message, the messages of hate. Right. And that message is not unique. Today marks literally the fifth year anniversary of Dylan Ruth coming to what used to be my hometown, Charleston, um, South Carolina, who he murdered nine people in a church. Um, this, this issue that we're seeing with George Floyd has been a longstanding issue that we saw with Eric Garner, with Trayvon Martin, with Emmett Till, with Martin Luther King. Um, I mean, it dates back literally since the beginning in the founding of America um, and for African Americans, 1619, there's always been this divide of you know, what it means to be black and American is it's a, it's a two, you know, it's a dichotomy, but we see that, that shift in not only health outcomes, not only law outcomes, but also along the lines of education, along the lines of, of wealth. Um, and until we deal with those systemic flaws, we won't be able to progress as a nation in total. And I think that's what this pandemic is showing is that when you have these targeted populations along the lines of, of racial discrimination, the entire nation suffers, and we're seeing a, a not only a health crisis, but an economic spiral at this point because of it. And, and so help me, as an American who happens to be black, let me put it that way, because that's what you are, you're an American. Right. Uh, 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 what, how do you, when you, see the, when you see the steps so far, uh, score them for me in the sense that um, you do see state and local governments, Washington, D.C., trying to do police reforms. Uh, you see uh, Quaker Oats today saying, you know, Aunt Jemima, sorry, we're taking that brand off. We get it. Late. It's over a century. But we're going to move and we're going to act. Uh, the University of Virginia. You're in Charlottesville, Virginia right now. The University of Virginia changing its ath athletics logo today because the athletic director says, came to realize uh, that the, the graphics in it were viewed as a pro as a uh, celebration of slavery uh, to the degree. Um, are these modest changes? Are they just symbolic changes? Or are they important brick by brick steps? Well, for one, I think it's, it's never a wrong time to do what's right. So I congratulate all those companies and those institutions for taking a step forward to say this is wrong and we need to fix it. Um, but it is a it is a bandaid on a on a it's a, of the symptom. And we do have to get down to the root of what caused um, a need for these symbols to be prevalent in today's time in the first place. Why is it that you need to have these imageries of, of lesser than, of, of, of black people and minority people of staying in your place? That's what we have to address. And if we don't think these symbols are important, then the billion dollar industry of advertisement wouldn't need to exist, right? So we know symbols carry weight. We know they shape how people not only view you, but how they treat you. And we're seeing those numbers, like I said, in the outcomes of black people being three times more likely to be involved in a police shooting, right? We see those numbers in African-American mothers being four times more likely to die during pregnancy. We see those numbers in us in our burying our children's two and a half times the rate of other races before they're one years old. We're seeing this in our children being suspended from schools four times more likely if you're black than if you're white. And so we have to start thinking as a nation, we can put Band-Aids 
and, and try to say we're going to do reforms on things. But I tell my, my students and my residents when they're rotating through the ICU, we don't treat symptoms, we treat diseases. And we must in America start to confront right. disease of systemic racism, or we will, we will see ourselves crumble um, as we are right now. We, we, are, we are in a time of crisis, and we need to have a full coding of America to get this right. Dr. Ebony Hilton, I'm grateful for your time and your insights perspective today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you. My pleasure.